We're live? Bonsoir. Bonsoir. All right. Yeah. Um, uh, good evening, everyone. It is seven o'clock on Thursday. What's the second? Second? Third. The third of February. It's our first um, live of the year. Uh, I think Facebook is definitely on, um, and uh, we've got issues with Instagram, but we're going to fix that. Apart from that, we've got an amazing new gear, which you can't see, but it's there. We've got one camera at the top there, so you're going to be able to see what's going on on the chopping board and on the stove, so I'm very excited. Uh, bonjour, bonjour, hello. Um, yes, yeah, so here's the first recipe. Uh, it's, again... Uh, promoting a uh, mass sauce range, the sauce by Manu. We're going to use the Diane tonight because we love Diane. As you know, Diane is good with steak, but it's good with so much more than just steak. So I'm going to show you. Oh, it's starting to rain, is there anything? That's fantastic. A bit of uh, ambiance of the rain at the back. I'm just going to wait for a few more people before I start uh, cooking. Uh, do we know if we've got a... We have an audience, sir. Um, We've got an, an audience. Anne, say hi to Anne Marie. Anne Marie, bonjour. She says you are looking good in 2022, Manu. Bonjour, thank you very much. And uh, Raylan, Raylan has a question. Raylan? Raylan. Raylan says, what is on the menu tonight? Manu? Okay, on the, the Manu's menu tonight, we've got um, a herb crusted rack of lamb with a peas style, French style, the petit pois à la française, we call it, which has got peas, lettuce, baby onions, bacon, a little bit of chicken stock, some butter, absolutely delicious. So that's a little fricassee of peas and the rack of lamb, which is obviously um, the best part of the lamb, I, I believe. Uh, we're going to do a beautiful herb crust on there, show you something absolutely delicious. Um, I'm just waiting for a little bit more, just so I can get on and, mm. yeah, shall I? So I got a Kathy. Kathy? Now, Kathy's son, you know, he's the guy that makes the margaritas. Oh, oh. well, uh, he makes the said, best margaritas in Bondi. Just, she just used your mushroom sauce. Oh, it thank you, delicious. Kathy. And thank she you. said, ah, Manu, you've oh, done it again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there we go. We're live on Instagram. Oh, Instagram, people. Welcome back. Welcome back. Sorry, there was uh, a bit of issue with Instagram. Facebook is always ahead for some reason. Um, if you do have issues on Instagram, just flip to, uh, to, sorry, if you've got issues on Instagram, flip to Facebook, yes, please. That'd be fantastic because also the, the Facebook uh, live looks a lot better on camera. Uh, we've got a wider picture and I look so much better. And we've got camera on top as well, which you can see all's going on on the chopping board. So anyway, so now we've got um, Instagram on and also Facebook on. I'm going to start my cooking demonstration. We're using the sauce by Manu Diane. Diane sauce goes very well with the steak, as we know, steak Diane. But I just want to show you that the steak Diane goes with a lot more just than just steak. So we've got a beautiful lamb rack. And we're going to do a beautiful herb crust on top of that, roasted in the oven. Absolutely delicious. And with that, we're going to serve petit pois à la française, which is basically French style peas, beautiful baby peas with a speck bacon, baby onions, a little bit of uh, coarse lettuce, a bit of chicken stock, and some butter. Absolutely delicious. Should we get on with it? Okay, we get, we're going to get on with it because the first step is to do this beautiful crust. So I'm going to move things around for the time being. So I can show you what's going on here. All right. So I've got a whole bunch of parsley, uh, which I'm going to break into my little machine. All right. I've got a whole bunch. Sorry. Are you seeing my head? I don't have a bow patch. 
Um, so I'm going to move this here. Uh, so a whole bunch of parsley, curly, flat, doesn't matter. Parsley is good. Um, I've got some sage here. Sage and lamb is marriage in heaven. It smells absolutely delicious. A lot of people don't know much about sage, but I promise you, like you could gr grow that in your garden because it just grows like wildfire, but it, it's absolutely delicious. All right. And I'm going to put a little bit of thyme as well because thyme is of the essence. <laughs> and I'm going to put a little clove of garlic. All right. Uh, anyway, I hope you had a, a nice Christmas, uh, New Year, New Year resolution. Uh, trying, I'm trying to lose some weight. Well, good luck with that because um, I do that every year and it never works. Anyway, um, I hope none of you got too sick with that crazy COVID BS. Uh, if you have, I hope you feel better. Um, and hopefully we just uh, to stop talking about it as well in the next few months. Okay, so a bit of garlic here. Just a little bit of garlic. Don't go crazy. All right. So I repeat a whole bunch of... Uh, I've also, sorry, I would like to remind you, we've put the recipe online. I, I'm doubling up the recipe because I've got two rack of lambs, but the recipe says half of that. So anyway, so I've got a bunch of parsley, a bunch of sage, a little bit of thyme, and a clove of garlic. And I've got 250 grams of uh, panko breadcrumbs. So now panko breadcrumbs is the Japanese-style breadcrumb, which is a little thicker, a little crispier, and then it, you really get the crunch when it's cooked, okay? You ready? By the way, this breadcrumb is going to turn out bright green. It's going to be gorgeous. Uh, sorry, I can't do question when the machine's on. Sure, I'll turn it off. Yeah. What's the question? Do you prefer doing things live or taped? Um, I like to do both, to be honest with you. I mean... Live, I like it. I, I would love to have the live audience in front of me even better. But I'm looking at the camera, which is kind of boring. And the cameraman is actually ugly as well. <laughs> sorry, <laughs> sorry, Matt. Um, but no, I love the live stuff. I really do love the live stuff for the live audience. It's fantastic. And the recorded stuff, it's more, it's easier because I, I can stop and start and so on. But with this, I've got to cook and talk at the same time, nonstop, so you don't get bored. So unfortunately, it's going to be boring for a couple of minutes because I need these breadcrumbs to turn green and I need to really whisk, whisk it for a long time. I'm going to add a little bit of olive oil just to uh, help to break it down. And a bit of salt and pepper to season it, of course. It is the boiling part of the recipe, but bear with me. All right, all right, all right, all right. Woo. Okay, I think we're, we're good. We're done here. All right. So I want to show you this bright green, bright green. Um, oh, we here. I forgot this uh, camera on top of me. Bright green uh, breadcrumbs. Okay, I'd like to repeat the recipe. It's got a whole bunch of parsley, a whole bunch of sage, a little bit of thyme, one crush of garlic, salt, pepper, a little bit of olive oil, 
um, and 250 grams of breadcrumbs, panko breadcrumbs. If you don't have panko, you can use your homemade breadcrumbs or even the, the fine breadcrumbs that you find in the shops. And here I've got 200 grams of butter, which I'm going to put the breadcrumbs in. So basically, most recipe that you would see out there um, would stop with a breadcrumb, okay? And then they would brush the lamb with a bit of mustard and they would push the breadcrumb on top of it. What I've done here is I've added some, so the butter's been out for a while so it's nice and soft. And I'm just basically mixing that butter and um, the breadcrumb together to form a, 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 a paste of some, like a little bit like uh, Play-Doh, okay? Which then I will be able to roll out between two pieces of greaseproof paper and cut out some beautiful rectangle that I'll be able to just apply on top of my land, okay? If you don't mind, I'm going to use my fingers. I can ask some questions, yes, please. Rach Days. Rach Days, yes. Say hi. Hi. She loves your sauces. Thank you. And she wants to know, do you have any new products that you're working on? Well, my darling, um, or oh, mate, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> um, uh, I've, I've got many other sauces uh, uh, that have been created and the recipes have been tested and so on. Um, Woolies are a little bit shy of uh, extending the, the range, I suppose. So we do have the Diane, we have the mushroom, we've got the peppercorn at Woolies. We've also got those three of those sauces and the red wine at uh, Delish Deliveries, which is an online food service, which is brilliant. And, um, and we've got a few more. But um, yeah, you just got to speak to Woolies and tell him to just get on with it. There was a rumor going around, Manu, that um, you might have developed some soup. Oh, well. Is that, yeah. is that true? Yes, yeah, so I, I was also working on some soups um, just before Christmas. Um, I had about seven or eight different soups, you know, beautiful vegetable soups, uh, even a French onion soup and tomato and sweet corn, uh, cauliflower, what else I worked on. It was great, but um, it's on the back burner at the moment as well, and uh, we just um, have to wait and see if we can get it next winter, if not this one. People want soup? Do people like soup? Oh, I th yeah, yeah, just... Would you like to see a range of by menu soups? Tell me, if you do, what flavor would you like to serve? Mm. Please comment below and let us know. What's your favorite soup, Manny? My favorite soup, uh, French, the French onion soup is absolutely delicious because there's a beautiful piece of toast on top of it with lots of melted cheese, which is great. Um, but um, potato and leek is also one of my favorite soup. I love a seafood soup. Um, yeah, I love soups in general, to be honest. So here you go, butter, breadcrumbs, herbs, garlic, and I've got a beautiful bowl of... Uh, of yes, it is. All right, let me wash my hands. And I'm going to get rid of this machine. Raylan likes your dance moves. My dance moves? Um, and said bonus, you dance and sing with your demos. Oh, yes, I do a little bit of everything. I like to... The thing is, I like to entertain. That's, that's what it is. So whatever makes going to put a smile on your face, people. Amanda says she misses your cooking shows. Talking about cooking shows, my darling. Um, MKI is coming back. It's coming back. We started filming very soon. I think we're still looking for some talented cooks. Uh, a team of two, as usual. Uh, we've got an international star coming to join me to do the judging. Any idea who that is, Manu? Uh, do you know? <laughs> do you know? Do you know? You can't say Ken. The I whole world is asking this question. You'll have to wait and see. Unfortunately, my uh, my hands are tied. Right in, uh, no, what's his, um, Boris Johnson? Yes. <laughs> Is, oh, is he having he is a, a very good chef. Is he having another party? <laughs> All right, so here we go. What I'm doing here is I've 
basically put this giant ball of uh, battered and herbed crumb into a greaseproof paper. I put another one on top of it, and I'm just basically going to roll it out. Um, about half a, mil uh, half a centimeter thick. Like so. Ooh, look at that. It's looking good. And because it's got butter and it's quite soft right now, of course, in the heat of the kitchen, I'm going to put this in the fridge and it's going to harden up a little bit, like me. Just hard up, hard enough. And then I will be able to cut a couple of rectangles the size of my rack. Someone said you had a very nice rack. Thank you very much. His name is Paul. Oh, Paul. From Thailand? I don't know. Oh. Anyway, that, look at this. All right? It's, it's a beautiful square of crust, herb crust, in the fridge to solidify a little bit, all right? Okay, so that's basically one part of the recipe, which we don't have to worry anymore about. Voila. Everyone's fascinated as to how you're going to do this lamb. Because a lot of people have tried this crossfit thing and managed to burn the shit out of it. Oh, so right. <laughs> so basically, uh, lamb rack is the king piece of the lamb, I believe. Um, now, I did the French trim, which is basically cleaning the bones uh, with a knife. You don't have to do that. What I did, though, as the butcher, is to give me two racks of lamb that was uncleaned because I wanted a little bit of fat on it. A lot of uh, the lamb racks that are sold on the market, they, they take all the fat out, and the fat, people think, is kind of not healthy in your life, but... Unfortunately, the animal fat is where the flavor is. So if you take the fat away from the lamb rack, you really lose a lot of flavor. So basically, there's two layers of fat. There's a, a big layer of fat here, and then there's another one underneath that I'd like to show you. And basically, you take the little knife like this, and you just cut and pull, cut and pull, all right? That's it. So basically, you are left with a beautiful rack of lamb with the meat, a little bit of fat uh, for flavor. And this, you know what I do with this last night? Because I cooked this dish at home for my family last night. I just chopped this piece and gave it to my dog and it woofed it down. So you can do whatever you want with that piece, but my dog's going to get this one. There's no wastage, wastage at home. Actually, I think my dog is probably the luckiest dog in Australia because <laughs> he doesn't eat, you know, crap. He eats real ingredients, real food like, like we do. So, all right. So I'm going to drizzle a little bit of uh, oil on top of my rack. <laughs> excuse, me, excuse the joke. Back in talent. And I'm going to... Be generous with a bit of salt. So Adrian's watching. Oh, Adrian Richardson. Hello. He's asking you, do you do an Aussie tomato sauce for his sausage? For, for your sausage, Adrian, I'll, I'll do anything. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so salt, pepper on either side of that rack. The oil helps the salt and pepper to stick. That's why I'm doing this. And I've also got a... So I also got a pan here, which I'm going to add a little bit of olive oil. Okay, salt and pepper in here. Chicken and corn soup, by the way. Chicken and corn soup. Chicken and corn. Yeah, no. 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 Didn't, didn't, didn't pass the test. No, I didn't have chicken and corn. I had chicken. I had corn and and corn and and basil soup. That's what I had. Yeah, chicken corn is just seventies kind of English. It's, it's yeah, English thing, isn't it? I'm it's French man, English. you know. Yeah. Yeah. It's like beef Wellington, you know what I mean? That's is French. That, is that French? Yeah, mate. Did we steal that? No, no, we named we named it after you, after you, the English. But uh, anyway, so here you go. Uh, salt, pepper on the side. French, not French. Take the first layer of fat, 
leave a bit of fat on top of that and uh, mid side down, fat side down, all right? And I can do this like that. See, what I love about food is when it looks good before it's actually cooked, it's amazing. Pumpkin soup. Pumpkin soup. Yes, I had a pumpkin and coconut soup uh, with a hint of little chili in there. It was absolutely delicious. Potato and leek soup. Potato and leek is one of my favorites for sure. And a question from Tim. Does Manu ever cook in an air fryer? What does she think of air fryers? It's a, it's a, air fryer is a funny thing. Like it, it's suddenly, it's been mentioned everywhere, right, left and center. Every time I open the Instagram, there's an air dryer recipe. I never used it. Uh, will I? Maybe I will try one day. At the moment, not interested. I'm just like to cook things the old fashioned way, like I've been taught. Um, but, you know, I, I, I like to, I like to be proved wrong, I suppose, but, I don't know, it's something that doesn't sit well with air fryer for me. Okay. Uh, old school, right? Yeah. Just, yeah, traditional. You know, if you want to fry something, fry something. It doesn't need to be air fried. <laughs> fry it in butter. Can, can you put butter in the air fryer? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> okay, so what I'm, doing, what I'm doing with the lamb rack at the moment is just I'm, I'm going to seal both sides of the rack, but so, especially on, on the mid side. Um, just to seal the flavors in. And then I'm going to throw in the oven uh, on 80, 180, 200, it depends what type of oven you've got. And I'm going to cook it in there for five minutes and then get it out and rest it. While it's resting, I'm going to brush some mustard on top of it, cut that beautiful piece of uh, green crumb and slap it up and put it back in the oven and finish it. So that's, that's how easy the lamb is to cook. So it takes about 12 to 15 minutes all up to cook the lamb right. See, that's what you want. Beautiful caramelization. All right. All right. There you go. Someone uh, very special is asking you to say hi here. It's uh, Charlie. Would like to oh, Charlie, my daughter, Charlie. Bonsoir. Bonsoir, Charlie. <laughs> uh, I cooked Charlie my lamb last night and she didn't want it, but she didn't want it. She didn't want the green stuff on top of it. All right. No green stuff. No green stuff. Charlie monkey. Charlie's looking gorgeous at the moment. She lost both her front teeth. Well, so, so, <laughs> I can't help this man, but you are a family of South Sydney supporters, right? <laughs> 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 Charlie just said, go, go south. Go south. Um, Heather's got an interesting one underneath. What did you name your new puppy? My new puppy is Flynn. Flynn? Flynn. F L Y W N. And Manu, I named, sorry, I named mine Manu. Oh, well, I'm. Called Manu. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if I should take this as a compliment or as an insult. You guys are going, Manu, Manu. <laughs> Come back here, Manu. Come here, Manu. He only Come. Ooh, Manu, Manu. He only French. <laughs> All right. So here we go. Beautiful caramelization on one side. So. I'm going to flip it on the other. Just crisscross the bone if you can. Ooh, hoo, hoo, it's hot. I forgot that uh, cook, you can burn yourself when you're cooking. Um, the reason why I'm doing this is because the meat is underneath the rack. So if you cross uh, the bones that way, then you, you basically support each rack side by side so they can nicely uh, rest like this. All right? So I'm going to put this in the oven for five. and forget about it. The oven is at 200, just because I wanted to boost it. The 180 would be actually quite plenty. All right, so I'm gonna reduce it to... A lot of people agree with you, man. Old fashioned is bad. Yes, indeed. So I've got a pot here, a cast iron pot. It can be whatever pot you want. I've got some beautiful speck bacon. Um, if you wanna buy the sliced bacon, you can, you, you may get a, a similar result, but what I like to, what I love about buying a chunk of bacon like this pack bacon is you can have big lardons, as we call them in French, big pieces of 
lardons floating in your peas. And that when you chew on the caramelized piece of that, it's absolutely delicious. So that's why I buy the spike. Um, smoke, double smoke, triple smoke. There's some amazing spike out there. But again, if you just want to buy the slice bacon, um, you know, because that's what you can afford or that's what you want or that's what you've got in the fridge, please do so, all right? So I'm just cutting some nice, generous lardons off. Come in the night so far from Sarah. Say hi to Sarah. Say hi to Sarah. Sarah, Sarah. Sarah. Oh, we'll Sarah. With food like this, I cannot be a vegetarian. That's right. <laughs> Don't get me started on that subject, baby. Oh, I'm sorry. That's you, right? Um, so, we basically, what I'm trying, what I'm doing right now is I am starting the pea, the pea, the petit pois à la française, the French style peas. And we're going to start with a little bit of olive oil, not too much because there's a bit of fat on the bacon. So, I want this bacon, this fake bacon to caramelize. I want the fat to render because that is the base of the flavor that I want to give my peas. All right. Well, I did have a beer before I started and a little nip of whiskey just to get me started even more. Um, but I'll, I'll, um, I'm just pacing myself, let's put it this way. Yeah. It needs to watch on the sauce, right? That's right. Yeah, that's um, yeah so what's going to happen, so you know, uh, we're having a little schedule here. We're going to do every two weeks a cooking demonstration. No, sorry. Let's put it this way. Today I'm doing a cooking, cooking demonstration. In two weeks from now, I'll be doing on a sauce with Manu. And then two weeks after that, another cooking demonstration and so on. So I'll be uh, talking to you twice a month, either business on the sauce with Manu with a couple of drinks or showing you a beautiful recipe using my sauce range. So on the sauce with so this is a cooking demonstration live that I like to share with you, uh, which is basically showing you uh, beautiful recipes also using my sauce range uh, on the sauce with Manu, uh, which started this last year and I started that by myself and then realized that I couldn't invite people to come and join me, um, and so we've got a, a basically a panel of people coming this year to join me on the sauce with Manu, which is me interviewing different type of people, business, sport, music, uh, a little bit like the podcast, but more like a video podcast in some ways. Um, and talking about small businesses, how, how did they get there? How hard was it? How easy was it? Why did you think of the idea? Et cetera, et cetera. So uh, I think it's going to be exciting. So it, it'll be... So the first one would be in two weeks. It'd be on the 17th of this uh, of this month. It will be at One Drop Brewery, which is in, also in Botany, like uh, like La Botanique. Um, th there's more news actually with One Drop that coming later. But we're gonna interview those guys. Uh, uh, they've got a beautiful story here uh, how they decided to basically become beer brewers, and it's gonna be fantastic. So that'll be the first one this year. And there'll be plenty more. All right, so I don't know if you can see, but this bacon is caramelizing like crazy. Uh, it's giving me a lot of uh, pork fat at the bottom, uh, which is what I want uh, to cook the rest of my recipe. Uh, I've got some baby onions here, some spring onions. Um, you can use shallots. If you want, you can use just normal onions if you don't have. And I'm just going to cut them in quarters or halves, depends the size of them. And I'm also going to caramelize them with the rest of my bacon. So Richard Isle says, and I don't believe this, maybe you know more than it. He says you can cannot get spring in New Zealand. Oh! Really? Really? Well. You definitely get the one. Uh, yeah, exactly. Um, 
I'm sorry to hear. Um, maybe that's a new business that you should get involved in, actually. Is this something you can't get or is it something you're not allowed to do? Or is it, you need to find out, yeah. All right, so onions are in with my spiked bacon. Uh, look at that, it just looks gorgeous. Like I, I, I love that. You know, you like you can have vegetables or you can have vegetables. You know, that's the difference, you know. Adding some flavor to vegetables is what I like to do. And um, unfortunately, yeah, we're talking about vegetarians. They can't have these peas right now. Um, and I don't care. <laughs> How long did you put the lamb wrap for in the pan? Oh, the, the lamb was uh, flushed on the pan for about a minute, two minutes on each side, just to get a nice caramelization, all right? And then basically, so I'm going to leave it here. I put it in the oven for about five minutes. It's just to start just to start the, the cooking process. Because now when this cools down, um, I'm gonna then add this a beautiful herb crust that I've prepared earlier, which is in the fridge to cool down and set. And then I'm gonna put it back in the oven for another 10 minutes or so, all right? So while this, oh, while this lamb is resting here, I'm gonna add some Dijon mustard. You can use English if you want to. Uh, English is a little bit more spicier. I don't mind it, which is great. But yeah, don't use the Ar American stuff. Uh, I would be very upset. So you just... like the English one? Yeah, English is good. That's the only type of English things that I, I like. So we should record that, right? Okay. Um, <laughs> so, English is good. We've got to grab it. Up. Generous amount of mustard. I'm going to let this sink in a little bit more. And before I put the uh, herb crust, I'll put a, another layer of, all right? Okay, this next step I'm gonna do is, uh, it's not something you have to do, it's something I will. I just want to caramelize my onions and give them a little bit more sweetness. So I'm gonna put a little bit of sugar. I know uh, people may not like this, I don't usually add a lot of sugar in, in my savory cooking. But just for uh, helping the onions to caramelize, I'm just gonna add a little sprinkle. Okay, that's it. Uh, again, you don't have to if you don't want to. I do it just because you'll see the reason between uh, the smokiness, saltiness of the bacon, caramelization of the onion and the peas. It just, it really works, all right? Sam's asking, is MKR definitely coming back this year? MKR is definitely coming back this year. The only person that I know that will be hosting and judging on there is me so far. Um, and there is a surprise person coming from overseas. Just keep on, keep on watching the news. Yes, yes, so. Um, it's coming back after a couple of years. Uh, you know, we kind of lost track uh, in some ways. We, 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 want to apply, we, we want people to apply that are actually love cooking. We've got a story behind them, uh, a recipe to share from, from their parents and grandparents and so on, of any type of cuisine from all around the world. Uh, it would be nice to have you on board. So please, if, you're on, if, if you are this type of people and there's two of you, or to abuse, as they say in Australia. Uh, just go on, the, on Channel 7 uh, website and please join in. We'd love to have you on. I'm, I'm, I miss it myself. All right, so. Oh, Gordon. It will take over my job, would it? Like I would be too. You could be nice to everyone. I could, oh yeah, he could, he could be the bad cop, I could be the nice cop, yeah, sure. Um, anyway, why not? If, if, if Gordon wants to work with a professional, sure. <laughs> All right, so bacon is well caramelized, onions are breaking down, a little bit of sugar to sweeten, and then here I've got uh, half a cross lettuce, or 
a baby lettuce which is on the recipe. And I know it's strange, it seems strange, but trust me, it, it works. So I'm going to put the shredded, um, what do you call it, uh, cost on top. All right. And I'm going to add a generous amount of butter like this. And I'm going to put the lid on like that. And I'm going to lower down the fire. What's going to happen is the lettuce is going to wilt. When the lettuce wilts, uh, I add the peas, a little bit of stock, salt, pepper, and the braised peas à la française is ready. All right? In the meantime, uh, this lamb has been rested. All right? So, I'm going to add another little layer of paint, of mustard. So that, that mustard is it's not really hot, but it helps uh, the crust to stick on and lamb must, mustard with meat goes very well together, as you know. All right, so, oh, that's hot. By the way, <laughs> if you put a whole pan in the oven and you take it out, the handle is hot. <laughs> right. Dear Matters, did you French the lamb yourself or get your... I did. So I asked my butcher to give me two on touch rack of lamb and I because I wanted to show you that I could take uh, the layer of fat on top by leaving another layer of fat on, on the bottom of it and I Frenched it myself yes but again you don't have to French anything it can be Australian all right so your local, butcher? local butcher which is my favorite butcher he knows Mr. Pete from uh, uh, Pacific Square in Marura. He's been a big supporter of mine. I buy the, all my meat from him. And uh, he carries my sauce as well. So uh, the only butcher in Australia that carries my sauce is, as I said, big supporter. So here, I probably have more than I need, okay? Which means you can put the rest in the freezer for another time. Okay, so don't go so I've made too much, I'm in trouble. So I'm just gonna measure up what I need. So I go like this, you see? John says he's not a fan of lettuce. No. Especially cold lettuce. He's like Elton John, he's a rocket man. <laughs> <laughs> John, John says that. John says that. Yes. Is it John who's, who's, uh, who's, uh, who's, uh, who's uh, Holding the phone right now, or? <laughs> but look, look at this. This is this. I mean, this is gold. You've got to look at this. This is what I love about cooking: is is layers of different ingredients that suddenly marry together and makes complete sense. Bacon, onions, and lettuce. I wish the smell could get through the phone. Ma right? I've said that so it's many times. I said that so many. All right, so. Smell-o-vision. So you see that I'm, I'm cutting a rectangle here of this crust. And look at that. I'm going to place it right on top. See, that's the difference between having a breadcrumb with no butter, which is basically breadcrumb that you need to push in into the lamb, versus having the butter that is actually... Uh, giving you um, a paste that you can handle and, and work with. So, as I mentioned, there's maybe a little bit too much that I need, but put this in the freezer, and next time you want to do lamb again, instead of making, oops, instead of making the, the, the crumb again, you've got some there already, all right? Look at that. Simple, like... As I said earlier on, if it looks good before it's cooked, imagine when it's going to be ready, all right? So I'm going to put this in the oven until you get a really nice uh, brand caramelization on top of that. And guys, I, I promise you, if you've got some people coming over this weekend, do that. They'll be your friends forever. So Tracy Sparkles has asked. Do you sparkle, Tracy? 
can you remind them what's in the crumb? In the crumb, in the crumb, I've got a whole bunch of parsley, a whole bunch of um, sage, a little bit of thyme, and one clove of garlic, salt, pepper, and 250 grams of panko bread, breadcrumbs or any type of breadcrumbs. And I blitz the heck out of it for about five minutes until that breadcrumb becomes really, really green. I do help it with a little bit of olive oil just to break down a bit. While it's done, I've put another 200 grams of butter into that to make a paste. Then I've rolled it between two pieces of parchment paper and set it in the fridge until hard. And then you cut a little piece of a rectangle to put on the top of your, uh, not your rack, but the lamb rack. Uh, and voila. Now the leftover, don't throw it in the bin. Don't be silly. Put it in the freezer. Use it again next time. Alex, how long is a piece of string? If you want to eat lamb tonight and eat lamb tomorrow again, you don't have to put it in the freezer. But if you want to eat lamb in a month from now, it'd be all fine. Um, I, I suppose what you could do is uh, uh, keep it out of the fridge now and make a little bowl out of it and then pack it into a, uh, one of those zip lock. That's probably the best way to keep it. How's that? All right. So bacon, lettuce, uh, onion, a tiny bit of um, a tiny bit of sugar, but you don't have to, and 500 grams of peas. They're frozen, and they're stuck to the bowl. All right. Says, would you use that crumb for any other meat other than that? Sure, for 100%. Just put this on a piece of beef, darling, or even a piece of fish. You get a beautiful piece of uh, kingfish. Why not? Like, frankly, uh, yes. I, I, I'm, I'm a big believer of, like, we talk about Diane sauce, steak Diane, and everyone's going to put Diane sauce on a steak. Sure, that's what it's been credited for. But why are you being so boring? Just you, you, just you can be so creative, all right? This is my recipe. Uh, you can interpret it the way you want. You know, like the, the crust that I've put uh, uh, parsley and sage and thyme. If you want to change it to basil, go ahead. You know what I'm saying? Don't go put hard herbs like rosemary or, or, or things that won't break down. But just please go ahead. I mean... Breadcrumbs, butter, basil on a piece of fish, John Dory, kingfish, you name it. Absolutely delicious. So I'm mixing my peas. Sorry, I'm peeing everywhere. <laughs> uh, a little bit of salt uh, and pepper. I'm just going to season it just a little bit for the time being because the, the bacon's got salt in it. So I don't want to overdo it. And a little bit of stock. All right. Chicken stock. Again, we need to talk stock here. Okay. Stop buying the, <laughs> stop buying stock, chicken stock from the supermarket. Okay. Because what I did yesterday, I'm going to talk about my dog again. Um, a kilo of chicken wings, a kilo of uh, neck, uh, chicken, uh, chicken neck, sorry. In the pot, water, one onion, one carrot, thyme, bay leaf, some peppercorns, a bit of garlic, and I brought it to boil for an hour. Stop, strain, you've got chicken stock. It doesn't take any more time or, 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 or stress than that, and you get real stuff, okay? And what you do with the chicken wings is you take the meat of the wings, and you've got food for the dog. <laughs> anyway. No, because you can't give cooked bones to the dog. It has to be raw, raw bones. Yeah, because there's got splinters and then you can... Uh, so that's why you need to get them... Yeah. LJ's got a question. Yeah, she says, 
maybe cutting down the wrong country here, but do you have a ragu recipe? Ragu, yes. Ragu is also a French word as well as uh, ragu. Uh, in, you in guys have invented everything. Now, in Italian, it's... In Italian, it's R-A-G-U. In French, it's R-A-G-O-U-T. It's ragu. Uh, ragu is actually uh, a, a stew of minced meat. So, yes, we, we can do ragu. would love you to do a ragu. Okay. Sometimes. The thing is, if I do a ragu live, we'll be together for a very long time because the ragu takes about two and a half hours to cook. And I'm sure you don't want to talk to me for two and a half hours. And maybe you do. I don't know. Okay. All right. So, as I said, we've got... Um, We've got Diane. Now, if you don't want Diane, you can use peppercorn. If you don't want peppercorn, you can use mushrooms. If you want mushrooms, you can use red wine. Again, it's up to you what you love eating, okay? I'm only offering su suggestions, okay? There's, there, there's, no, there's rules and there's no rules kind of thing, you know what I mean? So the, the Diane usually goes with the steak. Today, it goes with my lamb. All right, so... I'd like to uh, let you know that we've got peppercorn, mushroom, Diane at Woolies. And by the way, I don't know if I'm allowed to say this, we're only in 766 Woolies around Australia as we speak. But by May this year, we'll be in every Woolies around the country, which means South Australia and Western Australia. Welcome to the South by Money. And Tasmania, who are forever. Oh, yeah, sorry, yeah, Tasmania. I'm sorry, I forgot. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, Tazi. Like no. Where yeah, sorry, Tazi. And the reason why I, I like to explain is there's only eight Woolies in Tazi. So. Uh, that's why it was it, it was difficult to get it to you. But yes, so Tassie, South Australia, Western Australia, with the rest of the, the country, will get my sauce. Now, the more you whinge about it, the more you complain to Woolworth that you want more of menu, that would be fantastic because I've got so much more sauce to come. I've got a mustard sauce. I've got a lemon rosemary I've got a white wine sauce. Well, it's a white sauce that goes with chicken and seafood. I also got an onion gravy. I've got a French gravy. I've got so much to come. They, they, they don't want it. So please get wait. Get on their Facebook page. Get on their Instagram. Get on their Twitter and let them. We want Manu sauce. <laughs> <laughs> sauce. Hashtag. Hashtag. Yes. Um, and by the way, um, so the plan is now is every recipe that I will do every couple of weeks, or once a month, sorry. Um, the recipe will always go uh, online uh, a few days before I, I do it. So if you want to join in, buy the, ang the ingredients and join in and cook with me, please feel free. Um, and uh, just go uh, on uh, Buy Manu F on Instagram and Facebook and Manu manufellet.co is it? No, no, buymanu.co buy is my website for the sauce as well. So all the recipe will, recipes will be on there. All right? So look at this. This this is what I'm talking about. All right? This is what I'm talking about. This is not boring vegetables. This is, this is vegetables that you're going to be wanting to cook for yourselves, your friends, and your family, especially your kids. Your kids hate peas, just do that. Look, mommy, I don't want peas. Well, look at this, there's bacon in it. Try it. One of my daughters' favorite oh, vegetables. Mate, you know, like, come on. It took me, what, 15 minutes to make this while I'm doing another dish in the oven. Oh my God, it looks so good. That's what I like. Okay, so what I'm going to do here. <laughs> Look at this. Oh, I'm going to do something cheeky. And that, that's, where, that's where the chef comes out. It's things that you, you don't write into the recipe that you want to make it even more special. Okay, so... That's not in the recipe, but I decide, I've just decided that I was going to do that. Okay. 
And because I'm French, I do love butter. So I'm gonna put a little bit of butter here. And I've got a couple of garlic cloves left over. So I'm gonna keep them in the skin and smash them. All right, like this. And I've got a bit of time left over. Have I? Yes, I do have a little bit of time left over. <laughs> That's for you, Josh. Uh, anyway, all right. And I'm gonna let that butter melt. And again, you join your right. If you can smell it, that butter melting with the bacon and the thyme. Oh yeah, I'm getting impatient. So I'm cutting the butter into pieces. So I've got a bit of that green as well that's just came off. See what I'm doing here? I'm, I'm starting to get a bit of, oh, see, you just base it with a flavored garlic butter on top, like this, and that is an extra la layer of flavor. See, that, that's, that's the thing that sometimes we forget to share when we write recipe, is the passion that we chefs have to create something absolutely delicious, all right? Does it? All right. So, now, I'm going to take this lemon. Look at this. This. I'm sorry, but I, I just love what I do. I just love my job because we, 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 this, this, these recipes are a, a thousand years old, a hundred years old, whatever they and every time you cook them, they're still absolutely delicious. You don't have to do anything modern. Just keep it real. Um, I'm just going to give it a rest. Uh, it's, it's good to rest the meat. Um, because <laughs> uh, if, if I cut it straight away, it, it, there would be nothing wrong with it. But what happens is that all the juices kind of start running away. And you want the juices to stay in the meat so it's nice and tender, nice and juicy, it's not dry, and you get all the flavor out of it. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let it rest. In the meantime, uh, I'm going to start talking some BS if you want, or you can ask me some more questions. Yeah, or actually, before you do that, I'm going to get myself a beer from the fridge. One second. Talk amongst yourselves, right? Yes. <laughs> Not this time, I don't think, but uh, feature on Facebook. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Oh. yeah. Awesome. Okay, now the sauce. Uh, let's talk about sauce, okay? Uh, and I know the people who have followed me last year, they may know the message. Uh, if there's new people this year, I'd like to explain the sauce uh, and why maybe it's a little bit more expensive than what's out there because a lot of people say, oh, yeah, but you know, you're five bucks. Uh, look at all the brands for $3, 350 Okay, the difference is... Everything that's on the market right now is on um, the ambient shelves in a supermarket, in a middle shelf, okay? The end date of the product on there is usually 20, 24 months. And the reason why is because they use dry ingredients, dry onion powder, garlic powder, mushroom powder, or whatever, and a little bit of liquid in there, uh, and they put some... some uh, um, preservatives in there as well and then they lock that pouch and then they cook it that way the reason why it took me a long time to get this project happen is because it's been cooked the way i cook it at home or i cook it in a restaurant which means we've got a huge kettle of a thousand liter and we throw the onions in there and then we throw the garlic in there and we stir it all up. And then we add the peppercorn in there. We stir it all up. Then the wine goes in. We bring it to boil. Then the stock goes in. We bring it to boil. Then the cream goes in. And then we bring it to boil. And then it goes to the patch. And then it gets, it gets locked down. And then it gets to the fridge and cooled down. And that's why we've got a basically clean, fresh sauce with real ingredients made the real way with no preservative, 
with a shelf life of three months. Okay, that is the difference between what we do and what they do. And um, if you want to find it at Woolies, it's not in your source section because it, it doesn't exist. It's in the mid section. So when you go um, to Woolies, go to your mid cabinets where you find usually it's pretty much closer to the beef than anything else. And usually it's on the top shelf on a corner. I, I promise you, yeah, there's only three. So sometimes it is hard to find. But I promise you if, you, if you start buying them, you will go back to it again, again, and again. And if you can't find it, ask the manager. Yes. There's people working there. You know, just... Heather, uh, says, <laughs> Heather says, I think it's wonderful that we're able to buy a fresh sauce like that. What have you done for us, Manu? Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. So he here, says, wish it was in WA. It's coming, baby. May. Just put in your calendar in May. We'll be there. In your plate or on your plate. If the border's open. Even if the border's not open by then, right? Yeah, that's right. We can still get it. We can still get it. So here you go. Beautiful peas. That's amazing, man. All right. Tracy Sparkle, she said she's had your mushroom sauce last night on some beautiful organic chicken and herb sausages. And the sauce was amazing. Uh, amazing. So look at this. Oh, sorry. Oh. Hang on, hang on, hang on. We all make mistakes in life. All right, I'm only human, but look, basically, beautiful lamb with a beautiful herb crust that, guess what, stays on the lamb until you dig in, all right? Look at this. That's half a rack per person. Personally, I'll have a whole rack to myself. Do you like sharing your rack? No. Nope. All right. <laughs> and a little bit of sauce right there. Not on top, just on the side. So. If you like it. You like it. My dear friends, Facebook friends, Instagram friends, or just fans many fans. Uh, I wish you a bon appétit and I'll see you in two weeks from, oh my God, I'm so good. <laughs> I mean, I mean, if I can say so myself. Wow, you've got to try this recipe. Absolutely delicious. I'll see you in two weeks with one drop on the sauce with menu live. Ciao guys. Is it wrong? It doesn't even need any sauce. <laughs>